I got a quick email I got to read here. And then I'm going to do the raw report. This person here writes, So Seth Rollins is now supposedly a babyface, but still talks like a half-wit and dances like a complete idiot? Why can't he be a sincere guy acting normal? Well, I don't know if we need a normal Seth Rollins, but I don't know what's going on with this bloke. At least he's a babyface, so I'm not going to complain too much because that's a huge improvement. But he still comes out with his stupid outfits. He still rambles off his 85 gimmicks that he's got going on at the same time. And then the weirdest thing was, at the end of the show, he's just dancing around like a half-wit, as this person says. And he comes up to Alpha Academy, who are clearly heels. And he starts singing and dancing the, his ring music with Shoosh as the lyrics with them. And then they just cut away. I was like, what was that? Am I drunk? That was the weirdest thing I ever saw. That was weird. It's boogie woogie man Seth Rollins. That was the weirdest thing I ever saw when he started dancing with Alpha Academy and shushing his music. Uh, and then they just we never saw it again. If the, cha- if the fans are cheering him, he's a baby face. That's how that one works. I was, mean, it's what they're going to realize with Bobby Lashley at some point again, too. When people just keep cheering Bobby Lashley and you just go, eh. Okay, he's a good like, guy. Was it a pre-tape that wasn't supposed to air, and they someone pushed the wrong button? Anyway. He was just so damn entertaining, they had to leave it up there like that. Seth comes out in a preposterous outfit. <laughs> he glowed in the dark, I think. Oh, God. You know, I went, to, uh, <laughs> I went to the Oakland Zoo. Can you imagine? I went to the Oakland Zoo, and I, I bought a uh, like $9 pair of sunglasses. I think this is where Rollins got these sunglasses. Just these big, the big white things. He's and he's got a, his his hair. He needs conditioner in it, and he's just he goes. I'm Could the use some relaxer, I'm yeah. the conductor. I'm the you know all of these gimmicks. Like whatever, dude. And then he starts talking about the U.S. title. He's going to defend against Finn Balor. Lashley <laughs> the, comes out. The architect of fun. Lash, Lashley wants a championship match. Then Ali comes out. Everyone boos Ali, even though he's a babyface. And then Lashley says, bro, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to beat your, you know what, your bum. And he doesn't leave. And so, as promised, Lashley brutalizes, mutilates Ali, just squashes this guy. People are cheering Lashley like he's just the greatest guy killing Ali. He's supposed to be a heel, by the way. And, uh, you know, it was, I mean, it was fun. It's always fun to watch Lashley kill somebody. But I watched his whole segment. I was flabbergasted. It wasn't boring, but I was just flabbergasted. So then we had an interview with the OC, and Mia Yim is now nicknamed Mitchin, which she explains is Korean for crazy. We had a Riddle interview. Elias isn't there, and this set up Chad Gable and Riddle. They got 10 minutes. It was a very, very good match. And in the end, Otis interfered. Riddle avoided it. They did a series of of reversals. And then Chad Gable hits him with a backslide, puts his feet on the ropes. Uh, Otis holds his feet on the ropes, and they pin Riddle. They pulled off this finish. It was great. Riddle gets pinned, and he's sad. Had a segment where Damage Control asked Mia Yim to be in war games with them, and she said that she would think about it. You know where this is going? JBL and Baron Corbin are playing poker, and in comes Tozawa. He says he wants to play. They said, have you ever played before? He says, never. They said, all right, you're in. They start dealing hands. You know where this is headed. An atrocious segment with Miz. Miz is out there with Byron Saxton. Miz is, I don't know what he's wearing. I guess he's supposed to be, he's, he's in his sympathetic clothes or something and he's all sad that he's being stalked and byron saxton here's what i here's what i actually do like about this even though i think the whole thing sucks they are doing everything they can to make sense of this so byron asks him bro if you're being stalked for not paying dexter loomis why don't you just pay him which is a valid question and then johnny gargano comes out and johnny gargano notes you know, you could just pay this guy. Miz, I guess, is cheap. 
And Gargano announces that, in fact, several weeks ago, they were supposed to do a match where if Loomis won, he would get a WWE contract. Miz beat him up so the match never happened. They didn't forget the match is happening next week, or maybe it's Survivor Series, but uh, Miz will face Loomis. And if Dexter Loomis beats the Miz, Miz must pay him what he owes him, and Loomis gets a WWE contract. So those are the stipulations. They never said what would happen if uh, if Miz won. I guess we're just supposed to presume he has no chance. Shelton Benjamin promo. He uh, Him and Damian kind of get into it, but then it ends up being Dominic versus Shelton. They had a five-minute match. It was not very good. And uh, Dominic Mysterio ended up getting the win after, you'll never guess, interference. He got the pin with a DDT and a frog splash. So the whole show was about getting Austin Theory back over again. Because you know he's a geek, and the fans chanted, that was stupid, when it regards cashing in his briefcase. So he does a promo, and essentially the point of the promo, and I liked this in the end, he says, I'm done with this stupid gimmick. I'm done with the selfies. You guys don't know the ups and downs I've had in my career. I have not had it easy. He says... I've been watching Roman Reigns matches. He's got 50 guys out there, bloodline Sami Zayn. I had no chance of beating this guy with all those guys out there. So I thought, why not cash in for the number one title here on Raw, Seth Rollins, which he did. And he goes, I cashed in against Seth because I thought there'd be no interference. And this idiot Bobby Lashley comes out and he costs me the match. So he's angry. And as he's fuming, Dolph Ziggler shows up, calls him a loser, says it's the worst cash in ever. So Theory challenged them to a match later. Dana Brooke does the funniest and most preposterous promo you've ever seen. I, I can't believe that Nikki Cross took my belt, my legacy, this 24-7 championship, and she disrespected the 24-7 title and my career highlight by throwing it in the garbage. It's like, are you absolutely kidding me, lady? And so they end up having a match uh, later. EO Sky versus Dana Brooke. Three minutes, moonsault finish. Dana's pinned clean. Her legacy still in the trash. You okay over there? What is the Dana Brooke legacy? Would the Dana the Brooke 24 legacy... The 24-7 seven title. Uh, really? Because to me... Yes, that's what she the, said in her promo. The guy on Twitter that insulted her, so the boyfriend went over and beat her up. Maybe that's what Nikki Cross needs to worry about. Like, after the incredible career that Dana Brooke has had inside WWE, I cannot wait for the Peacock retrospective, and I cannot wait for 20 years from now, when they're desperate to bring people back, we bring back legend Dana Brooke. Yeah. She'll come out with a 24-7 title to get Wait inducted a second. into the Hall of Fame. How can it be her legacy if it's our truths legacy? He well, deserves you know, that far more than you her. You ever watched AEW? It's about nine people's house. <laughs> That's a good point. Lots of pillars there. Anyway, then uh, Mia Yim comes out and she says, I have decided to join the women's team at War Games. But not you, women! So she's with Bianca, Asuka, and Alexa, and they're going to have another woman. So Tazawa wins. Corbin tries to cheat. Tozawa calls him a cheater, challenges him to a match later on. We had Ziggler versus Austin Theory, 15 minutes. This was a really, really good match. And Austin Theory, no selfies. He didn't come out and do any of the stupidity. They're trying to make him a serious wrestler now. He, uh, he beats up Ziggler. He hits him with his finish, hits him with his finish again, takes him outside, beats him all over ringside until they just throw the match out. They didn't want to give him a, a loss, so they just threw the match out. And then he storms away saying, I'm no kid. I'm not a kid. He's really angry that Ziggler said, all right, kid. So now he's mad that he's a kid. So the funny thing is, his gimmick used to always be, I'm only 24 years old. That was his gimmick. He was so proud of being young. Now the gimmick is he's sick of being called young. 
And so he doesn't want that to be his his, his thing anymore. He just wants to be a a, a badass. It's grown ass man, Austin Theory, right? But there. the funny thing is, you know how when they come out, they got that thing on the screen that has facts about him. Like Dana Brooke comes out and it says "Legacy" twenty four seven title or whatever. Literally, this is how they worded it. He comes out and they put the thing on the screen, and the exact wording was, "He's only twenty four years old." <laughs> it's like God. Whoever write those facts ought to be slapped anyway. They need. To He's be only up. 24 years old, it said. <laughs> you know, I was going to switch to football, but now that I see that there's a wrestler who's only 24 years old, well, God, yeah. man, I'm going to stay and watch this one. <laughs> and hey, if they if they would have, it was a good match. Then we had uh, Baron Corbin versus Tozawa. You know this Tozawa? I said this about Brian Danielson the other day, and people were astonished with my... My wisdom, this Tozawa, is a good worker. Pretty good. Golly gee. 334, they had a, man, what a match they had. I'm not kidding. And then he came off the top. Corbin caught him in midair and then turned it into the end of days and pinned him. I enjoyed this a lot. We had that goofy, goofy segment with Rollins and Gable and Otis. And then Seth Rollins, Finn Balor in the main event. They went 21 minutes and 12 seconds. For 20 minutes, pay-per-view caliber match, big moves, back and forth, selling, great work. And then you'll never guess what happened. Well, 30,000 people ran in. Judgment Day ran in. Distraction. OC ran in. Distraction. Mia Yim ran in to attack Rhea Ripley. Distraction. Anderson... Like, all this stuff happened. Balor finally goes up top. Styles pushes Balor off the top behind the ref's back. Rollins hits the curb stomp. Rollins pins Finn Balor. And then everyone brawls to the back, so Seth is alone in the ring. And out comes Theory. And again, he beat the hell out of Seth Rollins. He posed with the belt. And they made it abundantly clear that even though they made the guy a geek last week, they made him a geek because they didn't want him to try to cash in on Roman Reigns. But even though he was beaten by Seth Rollins, I think it's pretty clear your next United States champion is going to be Austin Theory beating Seth for the title. And then they're going to try to push the dude again without that briefcase around his neck. So I realized when I reviewed this show, it sounded like a horrible show. I would not say it was a horrible show. There was some good wrestling on the show. At the end of the day, I'd say it was fine, but man, there's still some stuff that's baffling to me. Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Uh, actually, actually, yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him need. black and white, Jared. Make him look as old and gray as possible. There we go. Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. <laughs> This is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> well, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin Man. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.